ConstitutionalWar.org. It's that time again, folks. We've got to bust our butt to make sure that D.C. listens and does not pass Paul Ryan's budget, which will cut pensions of the military, it'll spend more now, and it's supposed to save us $23 billion over 10 years. That never happens. Um, Paul Ryan, he doesn't sound like he is even too much in support of it. This isn't even close to what we need to do to finish the job, to fix our fiscal problems. Maybe the only good news out of this is that John Boehner has finally grown a backbone and he's willing to stand up. Most um, major conservative groups have put out statements blasting this deal. Are you worried You mean that the groups that came out and opposed it before they ever saw it? Yes, those groups. Are you worried that there they're, are... They're using our members and they're using the American people uh, for their own goals. This is ridiculous. Oh, that's right. Boehner was standing up for Ryan and Obama. That's right. Uh, you know, Paul Ryan's budget. He wants to spend more in the last two years of Obama's presidency, which makes Obama look great. And then supposedly we'll get some cuts on down the road. This is why Romney Ryan would have been terrible for America. Everybody's cutting a fortune, but the debt goes up to $17.3 trillion in, in the next few months. It's, it's almost $100 trillion unfunded liabilities. Where in the hell are all these cuts? Hey, Mark, elections have consequences. If we would have won the election, we would have put in place our budget. Yeah, I we remember the election where we had a Republican president, Republican Senate, Republican House, and it was the most profligate spending in American history before this guy became president. And if you think that's outrageous, I mean, this next exchange is golden. The liberals want to spend, and so they want to increase spending in the short term, and they're willing to cut a deal that where you say we're going to cut the debt $23 billion over 10 years. Do I have her about right, Patty Murray? No, I'm Paul Ryan. See, Paul Ryan can't even tell the difference between himself and the Democrats. That's why you've got to get on the phones. You've got to call, and you've got to make D.C. listen. You tell me if I'm right, that we're on the fiscal ship Titanic, and we're debating what's gone over at the water cooler in the back there. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, that's why I'm not trying to oversell this. Uh, I don't think with this president we are going to fix our fiscal mess. I don't think he is willing and able to do what it takes to do it. Look, we passed the budget three years in a row in the House to balance the budget, pay off the debt. The president has never proposed a budget that ever balances, let alone pay off the debt. Neither has the Senate. So we're not dealing with governing, you know, a government here that is willing to do that. Ryan doesn't understand the Constitution. As a member of the House, we get to fund whatever we want and whatever we don't want. We want a majority there. The Senate, Obama, they shut down the government. It's their fault. No, no, no. These guys are all going to go and back every rhino candidate across the country. They're going to primary all the Tea Party guys, and they're going to say, shut up, pound sand. This is our party. I want to contend that, and I hope that you do too. It reminds me of the last budget debate. In the 80s, they did it to Reagan. A debt ceiling compromise. Democrats promising spending cuts but delivering only tax hikes. The 90s brought more compromises, more broken promises, and more new taxes. This August, the next chapter will be written. A defining moment. 14 trillion in debt, millions unemployed, the dollar in decline. We know where they stand. But will our party's leaders repeat the mistakes of the past? Will they choose compromise or conviction? One candidate has always been true. Ron Paul, cut spending, balance the budget, no deals. Standing up to the Washington machine, guided by principle. Enough is enough.